Today, we will embark on a journey towards the outskirts of the solar system to meet the greatest protective shield that nature has endowed us with before venturing beyond it where the interstellar medium begins. But before anything else, consider that you are already there now without feeling it speeding away 640 times faster than sound. And this fantastic cruising speed isn't that of Earth around our star, but of a gigantic ship, the solar system as a whole, which is engaged in a strange galactic dance. When we visualize Earth's path through space, it is customary to use this model arranged in a plane, with the stationary sun at the center and the other planets of the system orbiting around it. Except that this representation of our movement is only valid if we center on our star. However, it is not stationary in space. It moves at a speed of 790,000 kilometers per hour around the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Thus, in reality, using the center of the latter as a reference, all the planets of our system are thrust into a wild race, tethered by the sole force of gravity to the sun that drags them along with it. We evolve in a helical movement, slightly oscillating over a period of 26,000 years and unfolding some 27,000 light years from the center of the galactic siphon in the inner part of the Orion spiral arm at a distance of about 50 light years from the main plane of the disk, within which we traverse the local interstellar cloud, a region about 40 light years in diameter, in which we should stay for another 20,000 years. It's long. We will still visit many interstellar clouds because with this speed of movement of 220 kilometers per second around the galactic center, our solar system advances in the surrounding space a distance equivalent to that separating the Earth from the Sun every week. Which means that every 1,400 years, we have advanced in space by one light year. And at this rate, it takes us 240 million years to make a complete tour of the Milky Way. So, since its formation, our solar system has already completed 20 full orbits. And in galactic years, our planet is barely 20 years old. In this race around the Milky Way's center, our Sun is not alone. By studying the movement of nearly 75,000 stars located in our near vicinity, the Gaia satellite was able to extrapolate the trajectories of these for the next 500 million years. In this video, where every elapsed second represents 6 million years, you can see that the majority of stars stay in plane, inside the disk, when others, subject to very slight variations in their circular motion, come to leave it. In its progression, our star oscillates very slightly around the galactic plane on large timescales, to the point that it is thought to cross it 2.7 times per complete orbit. And it is astonishing to think that in this race, we are forging our way at considerable speeds through clouds of interstellar gas and dust, and this relatively without hindrance. The reason is that this frantic race is docked to a sun ship equipped with a powerful shield. A shield formed and renewed continuously by the activity of our star, and which takes the form of a vast and thin protective bubble, the heliosphere. This by stopping or diverting a number of extremely fast atoms, rays and cosmic dust, constitutes our first line of defense against the interstellar medium. By splitting gas clouds whose speed difference with the proper motion of our star is around 80,000 kilometers per hour, the heliosphere takes on a large scale aspect of an egg and vaguely recalls a comet's hair, slightly blunted in the sense of the sun's orbital motion. It draws on the opposite a long, slender tail, leaving in its wake, like a ship splitting the sea, a trail of charged particles flowing along its lines of force. This shield of insane dimensions draws its shape as well as its origin from the very activity of the sun, because in the high atmosphere, extremely hot of our star, every second, it's about a million tons of matter that are ejected in the form of a solar wind made up of an atomic particles plasma. And given that many of these particles have a metallic conductivity similar to that of metal, they induce a current called heliospheric as they move, which spreads and progresses in all directions, dragging with it a magnetic field. Our star rotating on itself in about 25 days, this field, carried by the solar wind, wraps in interplanetary space, taking the form of a spiral that undulates like a ballerina's skirt. 
and this continuous stream of magnetized particles extends and blows around in space at supersonic speeds of about 300 to 800 km per second, while exerting in its progression a sort of pressure that repels the flow of particles coming from distant space. Well beyond the orbit of Neptune, about 10 billion kilometers from its source, as the gases of the interstellar medium become more present, the strength of this current starts to weaken, the solar winds to slow down. And when their speed becomes subsonic, a terminal shock is then formed, a kind of percussion wave in space. By crossing this shock front, the charged particles coming from the sun lose almost a quarter of their speed, speed which is converted into heat, to the point where the electron temperature of these particles can reach a million degrees. Despite all this, since we hardly find more than one atom per cubic centimetre here, it is bitterly cold. And then, strangely, the border from which this shock manifests is extremely fluctuating. As it advances and recedes according to the rhythms, the mood swings of our sun. Thus, the Voyager 1 probes, launched towards the edges of the solar system, have crossed this limit several times, in 2002, 2003, 2004. Below this shock, the sun is the master. Beyond, its battle dries up. We are now in the Helios Heath, a dynamic, complex and chaotic transition region where the solar wind, mixing with the matter of surrounding interstellar space, forms magnetic bubbles that may be a billion kilometres wide. Just like the distance separating us from the terminal shock, the thickness of this layer fluctuates greatly over time. It expands or contracts cyclically depending on the density characteristics of the encountered interstellar medium. And especially subject to changes in the intensity of the magnetic field and the speed of the solar winds produced nearly 15 billion kilometres away by our star. Thus, the Voyager 1 and 2 probes, which took several years to cross the heliopause, have been able to record the presence of areas of dead calm there. And others, much, much more turbulent. At the edges of this most unusual layer, the velocity of particles originating from our star increasingly slowed down and compressed in their progression through the interstellar medium ultimately falls to zero. From then on, particles that have managed to reach from the sun to here accumulate in a region called the heliopause, the limit of the influence zone of the solar wind and the magnetic field it carries. A boundary so far from the sun that there is a time lag of two to three years between the jolts of our star and the shape of this last one. To get here, it took the Voyager 1 probe 35 years of travel, hurtling through space at some 60,000 kilometers per hour. It was long thought that by accumulating, these particles, highly energized by their deceleration, came to form, as we have observed for other stars, a shock wave, a region of high turbulence caused by the pressure that the heliosphere exerts in the direction of the sun's movement on the interstellar medium. But it seems, in light of recent discoveries, that at this region where two worlds meet, where our system cleaves the diluted ocean of particles from the surrounding space, a wave is formed instead. When in August 2012, then located a distance of 18 billion kilometers from the Sun, Voyager 1 reaches this limit. It detected, where the particles accumulate at the heliopause, a sudden increase and a 40-fold factor in the density of the plasma. Beyond this thin wall, the magnetic reign of the Sun King ends. The solar breeze is gone. The wind dies down, giving way entirely to scattered molecular clouds, intergalactic dust, or drifting remnants of supernovas. By becoming the first man-made object to penetrate this environment, Voyager 1 detected a hundred times more high-energy electrons coming from the rest of the galaxy than inside the heliosphere. The interstellar medium filling the space between stars is not empty. Although extremely diluted, Densities of the order of 0.3 atoms per cubic centimetre have been measured there. To get a sense of this trivial amount of matter, consider that on Earth, at sea level, there are some 27 billion billion atoms per cubic centimetre in the air. And even at the altitude at which the International Space Station orbits, this density is about 50 million atoms per cubic centimetre. And again, as strange as it may seem, this unusual environment is not necessarily cold. 
made up of molecules, free electrons and atoms, either neutral or ionized by ultraviolet radiation coming from stars. It is electrically charged and often has a very high temperature. Thus, the Voyager 1 and 2 probes were able to measure temperatures in the order of those found on the surface of many stars. And this extremely thin and often scorching plasma soup can even be listened to. What you are currently hearing, recorded by the instruments of the Voyager 1 probe and amplified to be audible to human ears, are the vibration variations of this interstellar plasma beyond the magnetic influence zone of the solar system. And this is the farthest audio recording ever directly captured by a machine made by humans. And just to finish this episode off with a bit of a brain knot, I would like to revisit this phenomenal speed we all currently have right now. Consider that since our solar system is moving around the galactic center twice as fast as a lightning bolt, then past events happened behind us. Count to five and you're in space, literally 1,100 kilometers further than where you were when you said one. Thus, everything that has happened on Earth has actually taken place in a different location in space than where you are now. Of course, strictly speaking, all past events did take place on Earth, but also in another part of our galaxy, a place where we are no longer, but through which we passed at high speed. And this video, which you started about 15 minutes ago, was launched nearly 200,000 kilometers from here, elsewhere in the cosmos. From this point of view, we are all great travelers and never pass through the same place twice. Agriculture was invented in roughly the same location, eight light years behind us, and the Great Pyramids of Giza, built 4,500 years ago, also stood somewhere three trillion kilometers from here. And my mind isn't going fast enough to grasp the enormity of this idea. If you liked this series, you'll probably enjoy this one too. And to follow other projects that often have absolutely nothing to do with it, you just have to go to my Instagram.